Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's recording. Oh, yeah? Yes. Say hi to the camera. <laughs> okay, that was easy. Hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, because um, sometimes it's good to have the information. I'm not sure if your, your classes are that way. Can you? Um, yeah, we, we record our, um, so like for those who don't come to the live lessons on Google Hangout, our teacher records it and then posts it on Google Classroom. Oh, yeah. Okay, so let me try to, oops, let me share the screen and see if I can go. Let me try. I'm not sure what that would do. What do you see? Um, it says you have started a screen sharing. What information do you see on the screen? So I see Zoom. I'm gonna come back to this page. This page, I love this. I love it, love it, love it. By the time I'm done with you, you're gonna love it too. The essay tends to be, I I think this year, last school year, they made the SAT essay optional. Is that right? Yes. So, are you? Will you be taking the essay, or will you not be taking the essay? Uh, with essay. Okay. If you're taking it with essay, you need this page. My French teacher used to say "à la page" on this page. So take note of this uh, URL. You see, love the love the sat dot com. Love the sat dot com. This is so important. Actually. Play around with this website and see what they got. Oh, oh, they want you to pay. Oh no, no. Okay. SAT prep top literary devices on the SAT test with explanations. You're gonna go through see literary devices. You need these literary devices if you want to do well on the essay. Why do you need it? Because that's what they ask for. When analyzing literature and reading on the SAT test, it's important to know what devices and techniques are being employed. The following is a list of 25 common literary devices you should be able to spot on the SAT and also use to ace, you see, ace the SAT essay. There are so many kids taking the SAT essay, they don't even know what these literary devices are. How are you gonna do well on it? There are lots of them. Now, the essay, have you, have you attempted any of the SAT essays? No, I didn't. They're not familiar with it. Mm -mm. Okay, so the format changed and I love the new format. Uh, the old format was they'll give you a, a line or something, you know, and then a statement and then they'll say, Give, write your opinion. Are you for it? Or are you against it? And give the reasons why you're for it and the reasons why you're against it. And that was okay. But this, what they have now for you guys since last year, is the best. I love it. Because what they do is they actually give you the article. They give you a whole article which you read. And then they always ask the same question. They give different articles. Maybe it's architecture in the 13th century and this, you know, about Leonardo da Vinci and all the you know, gothic arts of the whatever, you know? Um, or maybe it's a newspaper article about someone protesting um, racism at the workplace, da, 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 whatever. So they'll give this article and then they say, they ask the same question every single time. And if you hand your college board book with you, I would say open to a certain page, 
But time will do that because I want to read the question they ask every single time. Nice. And you're going to write it down. They ask this, this is a question you're going to see in the essay to essay every single time. Like I said, what changes is the article itself? And the question they ask every single time. As you read the passage below, consider how the author uses, okay, you know what, take a picture. Well, should I just take a picture and text it to you, you think? Yes, please. Maybe that would be better, this book is big. So I want you to read it. Is it, has it come yet? I got it now. Mm -hmm. You see what he says at the top there? The prompt is nearly identical on every single administration of the SAT. Can you imagine how easy they've made it for you to do well? For people who prepare. It's the same question. So if you practice the same question at home, when you get to the exam, you know what to do. And so this is what you get. It says, as you read the passage below, so I told you the passage changes, consider how the author uses evidence. And for example, facts, examples. How does he use facts and examples to support his claim? Consider how the author uses reasoning to develop ideas and to connect claims and evidence. So how does the author reason? Consider how the author uses stylistic or persuasive elements, such as word choice or appeal to emotion, to add power to the ideas expressed. So that's, they're always gonna ask that. I feel like it's dark in here. Let me turn some light on. Writer. Okay, so let's read on. And it says, write an essay in which you explain how. I, it, um, you took a picture. If you were reading it from a book, I'll, t I'll tell you to highlight how. How the author builds an argument to persuade his or her audience that author's claim. What does that mean? Build an argument to persuade audience. In your essay, analyze how the author uses one or more of the features listed above. So how does the author use evidence? How does the author use reasoning? And how does the author use stylistic or persuasive elements to support his claim? Ensure that your analysis focuses on the most relevant features of the passage. Your essay should not explain whether you agree with the author's claim. Nobody cares whether you agree because the old SAT, they needed to know whether you agree or, you know, you're for or against. Nobody cares. What this essay is looking for is, but rather explain how. Do you see how how came up twice? 
how is the author building an argument to persuade his audience? Now, we're going back to Love the SAT website. I love the SAT website. It shows you the how. It shows you so many hows. Let me get that screen back. First one, even does it in alphabetical order. Alliteration. Does the author use alliteration? Repetition of consonant sounds. Typically found in the first letters of words. The opening line to, to such and such's dream song, for example, is alliterated. Huffy Henry hid the hay. Huffy Henry hid the day. That is alliteration. Does the author use a lot of that in his article? Does he use allusion? Which is a reference to history or another literary work. For instance, in Allen Ginsberg's A Supermarket in California, Ginsburg alludes, see allusion, alludes to Walt Whitman and Federico Garcia Lorca, fellow poets, as well as Charon, the ferryman in Greek mythology, who's charged with carrying souls across the river sites in the underworld. That's allusion. So, Allen Ginsburg in his article, A Supermarket in California, alludes to Walt Whitman and Federico bloody bloody blah's po poem. So if you read an article where there's a lot of allusion, that's your job. They want how. So you're reading the article and all you're going to write is, um, in this article, I noticed that the author uses a lot of alliteration, allusion, and assonance. I noticed that for alliteration, for example, in the paragraph, then you quote in paragraph that says daddy, 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 daddy. You can see that he used a lot of alliteration. Huffy Henry hit the day. That's the SAT essay. Or you cannot identify what, how the author is communicating to his audience if you don't know all, look at all of them, look at them. Imagery, irony, metaphor, motif. I don't even know what that is. Onomatopo, onoma, you know that word, right? Yes, Onomatopoeia or something like that. Words like pop, pop, pop. Uh, pop a doodle do. Words that sound like they are. You know, um, the cock crowed, cock a doodle do. That cock a doodle do sounds like the cock. Um, the fireworks went bang, pop, 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 zap. So that's onoma onomatopoeia. Oxymoron. You know what an oxymoron is? Mm, yes. Yeah, an oxymoron is two things that can't ever happen. Um, it's an oxymoron to say... The smart couch. The smart... Couch. Couch? Like, yeah, because a chair can never be smart. Yeah, something like that. So if the author is using a lot of oxymoron where A does not equal to B, but he's putting it together, and this one, noble savage. A savage is a barbarian, you know, has no manners, no, you know, savage. And yet, noble? So, paradox, a seemingly contradictory statement that gestures towards a deeper truth. For example, in Shakespeare's Hamlet, Hamlet says, I must be cruel only to be kind. That's a, that's, that's a paradox. So you want to be kind, but you want to be cruel to be kind. This is similar maybe to an oxymoron. Another example is funny in Oscar Wilde, I can resist anything but temptation. <laughs> that's a real paradox. Like, I can resist it. Well, it's only temptation you want to resist in the first place. Personification. The attribution of human traits to non-human things, all uh, uh, cartoons. My favorite one, Bugs Bunny. That's all personification. A rabbit can't talk. Beauty and the Beast. Everything in the castle has a personality. The broom, yeah, the, 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 the kettle, they're all 
talking. Does he use a lot of pun, a play on words that relies on sonic similarities as in the importance of being earnest, where earnest is a pun on the name of the character, earnest. You have to know all these, sarcasm, similes, symbol, theme, thesis, tone. A lot of them I don't know myself, but I don't need to know, because I'm not sitting in the SAT. You need to know, because you are. And my job is to point you to where you can know. And once you can learn these and know them, you know it's going to be easy for you to read um, something and then say, oh, this author is using a lot of personification. Or maybe it's even stuff that's not here. Maybe, I'm not sure if humor. You know, does he use a lot of humor? You know, do you have humor here? No. You know, so it doesn't really matter. It may not be one of these. Let me see if I can find them. Okay, so we're going to leave that. So, so that's the essay part. Um, and what I'm going to do is, today is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Monday. So we're meeting again on Monday. Um, so it's not a lot of time. And your book hasn't come yet. So I will give you something to do. I'll, I'll put something on your phone, text something on your phone for you to do. Probably we can, I can text you an essay just to see if you can identify. So that means, yes, you have to go on this website or wherever else you want to go to pick up different literary devices. These are just the literary devices that the SAT tends to use. Maybe more than other literary devices. Complete SAT, essay, and SAT, ACT. Only to buy this. How do I get out of here? So what I did was I clicked on this ace the SAT essay and it took me to, to go buy the course. Okay? So that's what you have to do. So that's one of your homeworks as well. Rhetorical questions. You know, that's a question that is not really looking for somebody to answer. You say, am I blind? You don't want someone to say, yes, you are blind. <laughs> am I blind? Is that why I couldn't see what was going on? Yes, you are blind. No, no. I'm not expecting anybody to answer. Uh, and so on and so forth. I like this. I really, really like this. I feel like if I was going to take the SAT, I feel like I've aced the essay. I just memorize this stuff. And then I'll shine because now I have to analyze why, how, remember the key question is how. How is, you read an article, how is the author of this article communicating with you, the audience, you just read it? What style is he using? You know, is he using a lot of persuasive speech? I don't think persuasion is here. No. Is he using a lot of... Um, I'm not sure if that's here, like emotional, you know, is, is, he, is he, I remember reading an art, uh, I guess it was the SAT, where the author was just playing on the reader's emotion, saying things like, if that were you, would you like it that your child gets thrown out in the cold? Well, this is what's going on in America. 10 million children are going hungry every day. Would you like it if that, you know, I'm just playing on people's emotion, like, no, oh, I wouldn't like it, I wouldn't like it, you know, and that kind of thing. <laughs> I get a little bit excited sometimes, even on this. Okay, let's move off of the essay, but I've given you something to chew on over the weekend with the essay. Now, we still haven't made it to Khan Academy. What happened to my notebook? Oh, okay. what was this one we just did? Um, essay and it's literary devices. Am 
I really want us to get to Khan Academy. We invited Faith. Ab What's your last name? Abenam. Abenam. Okay. We uh, inv invited Faith Abenam at crphs.org and are waiting for a response. Yeah, I didn't get anything. Huh. Faith dot unless I didn't put in your your email address correctly. Okay, let me delete this invitation. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. So let me try again. Back. Nope, not gonna work. Give me a children's account. Take your child's name to do their progress. At least in this case. Make sure you want to delete, delete. Oops, we weren't able to delete the invitation. Please try again. So let me add a child. Tell me your birth. Oh, my child already has an account. That so you already have an account. Now I need your email address. So watch me as I type it in. Okay, dot, oh, at, what comes next? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you, you hit mute. It's um at crphs.org. CRPHS? Yes, ma'am, dot org. Okay. Does that look good? Yes, ma'am. Let's try that again. Invitation sent. You'll be able to follow your child's progress once they log in and accept your invitation. Log out and have your child log in. Or maybe I have to log out again. Oh. I got it, ma. Oh, you got it? I, yes, ma. I accepted it now. Oh, you're in. So you. So what do you do again with um, Khan Academy? Um, like math and English is always assigned, and then we have to complete them. So was this before the quarantine? Yes, ma'am. You was you were using Khan Academy anyway? Yes. Oh. That's interesting. Was that used as a supplement to your, you said math and English? Math and English. Was it used as a supplement or as the main? Program? As a supplement. Oh. So just for homework? Yes. And then sometimes like classwork in class. Um, I think that's what I can do here. Parents dashboard. Oh, courses. There we are. Courses. I say, hmm? Yeah. 
SAT anyway? It's up there. Oh, at, at the top! <laughs> yeah. You can get stronger glasses. <laughs> So, your PSAT has been pulled into Khan. So this is probably from like your 10th grade PSAT? Um, Fall of 2015. So that's, that's ninth grade, no, 2016. Okay, so this 11th grade was fall of 2019, 10th grade was 2018, 9th grade was 2017, 8th grade was 2016, 7th grade? You think the PSAT in 7th grade? No, I don't know why that's like that. I didn't, I just um, connected it in class like a month ago. We um, connected our Khan Academy with our um, college board. Yeah, that's the key to schedule from here. But what I want to do is I want to play around with it a little bit. I want you to play around with it too. It gives you opportunity to choose your next test date, but I don't see, I do not see August. But we're working with an August date. Well, we have to find out, is there even an August date? You know, they change these things, you know? So step one. So, I mean, uh, creating your schedule section. So these are some of the things that you have to do. The current skill levels, the current, current math skill level. So this, so this isn't, um, your schoolwork is not SAT on Khan Academy, right? No, ma'am. Okay, so we're not, I don't want to mess with anything school. Yeah, so let's separate the issues. School is school and SAT is SAT. What math are you doing right now? Um, algebra 2. What topics are you doing right Um, logarithm, the power of I. Okay. Have you done polynomials? Yes, ma'am. What's your, what's, what grade are you average? Right now in math, mm -hmm. it's an 89. Into okay, let's get out of here. Yeah, get out of here and let's go into the college board. Do you remember your logon details? So this is all stuff you, when was the last time you were in college board? Like two weeks ago. At school? No, at home. Or just on your own? Yes, ma'am. So what you need to do is send me your, so add that to the list of things to do. Send me your college board logon, the logon details.
So we have several sections on the SAT itself. The essay is a separate section, the reading, and then the, 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 the grammar section, but they call it writing. And then what happens is you get two grades. Oh, before we talk about the grades, and then they have the math section, but the math is split into two sections. You know that, right? Yes. So you have the calculator section. So in that section, all it means is you are allowed to use a calculator, but the trick is you don't need your calculator for every single problem. And people who don't understand that the SAT is a test that's trying to test you out and catch you out. You know, mean kids that put their foot out as you're walking and you trip over. That's what the SAT is like. It's looking for, looking to see who's smart enough to notice that the foot is out and will not walk in that path and then go down the other path. That's what the SAT does. It's like a sneaky exam. And so part of what I do is to help students understand it's a sneaky exam and to identify when it's being sneaky. And to identify the different ways in which, the obvious ways in which it, it tends to be sneaky. For instance, if you have a math problem that's two parts, maybe first you have to, I don't know, factorize something and then use the value. Uh, no, a typical one they do, a typical sneaky, sneaky SAT math problem would be, for them to give you a pretty easy math problem, like 2x plus 4 is equal to what? You know? And then, after they wrote 2x, they'll say solve for 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. And then they'll say find the value of x plus 2. Or find the value of 2x. Of course, if you're, you're, not, you're not aware of it and you're just rushing through, you'll solve 2x whatever I said, 2x plus 4 is equal to 0, which is super easy. x is equal to negative 2, right? But that's not what they asked for. They didn't ask for x. They asked for 2x. And the smart kid already knows the SAT does that. Now, that answer you got, x is equal to negative 2, is going to be on the option A or B, really high up. So for someone who's not smart enough, who's not practiced enough, who thinks he's all that, I can go and do the SAT without much practice. We'll solve that problem. We'll get the negative two, and there's negative two. That yeah, and circles it. Yeah, but the smarter kid knows they didn't ask you for x. They they calm down to read it, but they know SAT is sneaky. They want two x. So the kid who circles negative four, which is twice of negative two, gets it right. Super easy problem, but we're only looking for smart. And being smart isn't just about being academically smart. I mean, there's some term called street smart. You can be street smart. You may not have gone to school, but you're very, very smart. You know, you know how to sort yourself out and set yourself up, make money. You know how to go and buy stuff from the wholesaler and go and sell it at 10 times the amount in a small store. And you, don't, you didn't need to go to school for that. So the SAT is kind of looking for smart kids, which is one of the reasons why a lot of Chinese, Southeast Asian kids, families, are suing schools like Harvard. Because Harvard is not looking for kids who are just intellectually smart. They want, you know, these Chinese kids, like I said, from when they were, you know, 10 and 11 and 12, they've been practicing the SAT. So you're sitting and taking an exam where you practice for three months, you're sitting and taking an exam with kids who've been doing it for six years. Of course, they're going to score better than you. And after a while, Harvard especially, and all the Ivy League started noticing that. And then they were like, well, we're not going to just give them admission. So these kids will get perfect scores. A total score of 1,600, they'll get 1,590. They'll get 1,600, but they weren't getting accepted. And then a kid that just gets 1,350, but it's you know, from their essay and from everything they've done, you know, they've headed different organizations, they've, whatever they've done, they've played, they've played an in musical instrument for like 10 years since they were four or since they were five. They, they're the head of the soccer club or whatever, you know, they will give those ones admission sooner than the kid who just has practiced how to get 1600 out of 1600. So what you're trying to do with the SAT, you're just trying to show that you're smart. 
okay and that's why you have people like me and lots of people out there um, who teach you how to get a good grade whether you're good at math or not talking about people out there i love youtube because i learn a lot from youtube i have a youtube channel i started a youtube channel i don't know like five years ago but i didn't really do much with it you know i didn't i didn't really pursue it i put some of my sat classes on there i did a few things on there um i have another channel i kind of pursued that and i have quite a few subscribers but that one is how to create passive income online like you don't want to you know you, you're working but you want to make extra money and different ways of doing it or doing it on your computer so i kind of do a lot of that now but i use youtube a lot and there's some um i guess so many so much information because i didn't actually ever take the SAT. I teach it, but I've never taken it. And I like to listen to the channels of them. A lot of them tend to be these Chinese young men now, maybe. And then they set up a channel on, you know, how to get a perfect score. And then they give you all these tips, things that they learned over four or five years as students. I remember one of them saying he used to wake up at uh, four or five a.m. every day and do a complete SAT test before school. That was his way. He wake up early. Obviously, he has to go to bed early. He's not sitting up, sitting on social media or whatever. He's in bed at maybe ten. He's up at four. The school bus gets there at six thirty. He's up at four. He sits there for an hour and a half every day before school. So that's why I said I need you to get your plan, and your plan is going to be based on how much time you have, and you're gonna calculate all that. Okay, I thought we could get into college board. I have somebody, this, this used to be an old student of mine. Join YouTube live classes. Let's see what it's done. There's someone I'm going to, oh, so what I was saying about YouTube is I tend to recommend that, and this is another assignment. You're going to find someone on YouTube who teaches SAT that you, that you like. You like their style of teaching. You know, the videos aren't too long. 10 minutes 15 minutes to learn something you know um, you're gonna find somebody on youtube and you're gonna go on youtube you're gonna google sat math or sat tips sat strategies and you're gonna come up with so much there's a lady i subscribe to she has such a large following but to be honest i don't personally like sit listening to her videos or anything but I guess I subscribed to her a while ago but she's an authority you know she has lots of students lots of following on my like you Uh, this is the lady right here. And she gives a lot of tips and strategies. I'll tell you something now. I'm telling you the honest truth. To improve your scores, you're going to rely heavily on tips and strategies 
it's too late in the day to learn everything, right? You literally need to double your score. You had a score of seven something, seven eighty. I forget what that was. You literally need to double it to, to aim for fourteen hundred. On the reading portion. What are glam and books? Teaching over a decade and a half. I really appreciate it. It was To, now, if we go through some of her videos, you'll see how do I get to her video? Um, oh, we have some of her videos. Do you see these ones? Yes, ma'am. So, SAT math, hard questions, easy hacks, five activities that don't help your college application, SAT grammar tips, crush the writing and language section. Um, and then, of course, while you're doing that, you'll come across other people, right? And then you click on them. Um, and that's how I came across a couple of Chinese guys. And, man, I, I really learned a lot from them. So you're going to take time. You see, you're going to have to take time. So listen to them. I like her because she doesn't, it's, her videos aren't too long in the main, you know, 10 minutes. Um, this guy here is talking about how to improve your SAT reading score by a whole 140 points. He was at 620, he went all the way up to 760. Most common mistakes, you want to read, these are the ones you want to, you want to make sure you are understanding what you, what mistake you would make if you hadn't prepared. So that you're aware of the fact that, oh my goodness, I've been doing that. Then you know to stop. Look at this one. The 17 essential SAT math formulas explained. So the basic math formulas that you tend to need to do well on the SAT, they figured it out. Oh, last minute tips on the SAT. You know, so on and on and on. So that's another assignment. Spend time searching for what works. So by Monday, I want you to be able to say, oh, I discovered this particular person. I love the way he or she, da -de da -de da da I've learned so much. Da -de -da -de -de -de.
Okay. So I got a lot of tips from these, watching these uh, videos. And then I would teach the tips as well. So the reading, when I start teaching you on the reading section, I'm using tips, especially from those young Chinese, even young men, who figured out how to read these passages in a short period of time and get them close to 100% accuracy. Because the challenge is the passages aren't like easy passages to read. And then you have like five passages and then you've got to answer questions on five passages and you've got to do all that in one hour. The very first thing, it's a tip, maybe some people just know to do it without really, let me open my window, sorry, it's feeling hot. Some people just know to do it, I guess. That is to pace yourself. You gotta pace yourself. And so you take an SAT question, like your McGraw, your McGraw Hill SAT book. You have sample SAT tests in there, right? Yes, ma'am. So you're going to go and take a typical test, and you will see the information is right there above every test. It'll say reading section. 60 minutes, 55 minutes, whatever it says. And then you're going to look in the section, you're going to see how many questions you have. For the writing section, you may have, I don't know, uh, 75 questions. Then you're going to divide how much time you have by the number of questions. And most times it will tell you, I know in the math section, it will give you a minute and 50 15 seconds per question. One minute and 15 seconds per question. Those are things you're going to do before you sit the SAT. So you're doing it already and you'll do it for every sample test you do and you'll, you'll, be, you'll know that, oh, the reading uh, section, I have about 50 seconds per question. You know, because the reading section is different. You need time to read the passage and then time to answer the questions and you have five of them. So then you take, say, 60 minutes, divide 60 minutes by five passages, you have 12 minutes for each reading passage and questions, right? So you have to be practicing with 12 minutes in mind. So when you start doing it at home, you may not be too concerned about your 12 minutes, but you want to be aware of how much time. So you're not ever going to do any test without timing yourself. So between now and um, between now and Monday, I do need you to do one. How many, how many, how, what have you been doing? Have you been doing sample tests? Um, I've just been working on the problems, the math. So you're just taking a problem and working on taking a problem and then check the answers, which is good. And so if we had more time, that would have been good. We would have been doing that. Let's say we had uh, some of 10th um, grade and then all of 10th grade and then 11th grade. No, what's, the, what's the summer before your 11th grade? So if you had, say we started the summer of 10th grade and then 11th grade started and then you were planning to take it in the March, then I would start you in that summer with doing what you're doing now. Let's just do some of these math tests and know how to solve them. But about halfway through that time, this is eight months, about into the fall, fourth month or third month, I'd expect you to start timing yourself. We don't have time for all that. So you're just going to start timing yourself, you know? So what you're going to do, you're going to, you're not, you're not going to do one problem at a time like you're doing. You're going to kill two birds with one stone. The same time in which you're going to spend to do those math problems, let's say you spend 30 minutes and you do Four math problems. You're still going to do your full math problems, but you're going to be timing yourself. And then what you're going to do is you're not going to do one or two problems. You're going to do whole sections. You're never going to, from now on, you're not sitting to do one, 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 one. So we want to be doing two, three things in one, one go. So you're doing the test. You're practicing the math. Perfect. You're timing yourself. Perfect. So those are the two components of success having us uh, getting successful being successful in the SAT so you can't just face, face on face one aspect anymore 
So put down in your list of things to do. You're going to, between now and Monday, you're going to do a complete, a complete SAT test. Or you're going to time yourself for every section. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna time yourself for every section. So what you're doing between now and Monday, you're not trying to make the expected time. You wanna see how much time this takes you, okay? So you're gonna do it and put yourself under test conditions. You may not be able to sit and do the whole two, three hour test, yeah? But I want you to make sure you have enough time to complete one section. So if you're doing the math, it's 55 minutes, you need to, do 55 minutes, do the whole thing. When you're done with the whole thing, check the answers, check the solutions. You gotta do that, otherwise, that's like putting food in your mouth, chewing it and not swallowing it. You know, you, you gotta check the answers and see how you've done. But we're not gonna take the number one, check the answer, the number two, check the answer. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, you, you, I'm trying to make you like more efficient, efficient, okay? You're doing complete sections at a time. Don't, you're not trying to make the 55 minutes right now, but you're trying to know how much time you take. So if it's 55 minutes in a section and it took, takes you 65, now you know you gotta pare your time down by 10 minutes, right? So that's all we're trying to do between now and Monday. Let's know how long it's taking you to do um, each section. Any questions? No, ma'am. No questions? I've given you a lot of work to do, right? Um, I want you to have the mindset of you've got a lot to do, but every time you get one thing done, Every time you learn one thing, like you learn your literary devices, I want you to feel a sense of accomplishment that at least I got that one down. <laughs> you know, and every time you get one more thing done, it'll make you feel good. Rather than looking at the hundred that needs to be done, getting stressed over the fact that, oh, I should have been doing this three years ago and then getting, you know, anxious and, you know, fretty and everything. That, that's, that's, that's not going to do anything. But what you're doing is every one thing you learn, it's improving your score. It's moving it up another 20 points, another 30 points. So by the time you take your test, you may not have mastered, let's say the 10 areas. You may not have mastered them all, but you've mastered more than what gave you that score. <laughs> you get it? So you know you're gonna, you're, you know your score is gonna be better without even seeing the results. You already know like, hmm, it's gonna be better. So how much better? Depends on how much work you wanna put into it. Uh, I try not to nag my son that now he has a, he, he's in 11th grade, but now he has a lot more time. Can he make sure he doesn't spend a lot more time sleeping, a lot more time watching movies, a lot more time on social media, a lot more time playing soccer, which he loves, because he's going to use up all the extra time, all the things he wants to do. And schoolwork stays the same. The same time he was using to do his schoolwork and SAT when he was going to school and playing games after school and coming back late, 
And then now with all this time, you're still using the same, then you are not smart. <laughs> I'm sure you can hear a bit of your mother in me. Then I said, yeah, and then that such a person is not smart. He's just not smart. He spent the extra time for himself. When some smart kids out there are like, I was spending seven hours before, now I can spend 14. You are spending seven hours before, now you moved it to eight and you're feeling good. <laughs> That's nothing. You need to be doubling whatever you were doing before because you got the time. You can do your schoolwork, you can do your SAT work, you can do your fun, you can watch your movies, all the movies you couldn't watch during school time. You, you can do it all if you're smart. So we've talked about, let me see about the actual sections. We've talked about the essay. And then we've talked a little bit about the grammar, which is the part of the writing. Reading and writing form, reading and reading and the grammar section form, actually reading grammar and the essay form the, the reading score. There's a way they put it all together. You get a score in the writing, you get a score in the reading, they get a score in the essay, and they calculate it with their formula, and then they get that number. And the way they calculate it is in the college SAT, the college board grade. They show you how they calculate. So you can actually calculate your grades already. The only thing you can't really do is, I thought the only part you can't really do is read the essay. But I know there's websites out there that will read your essay. I'm not sure what my son, I'll find out for my son. I think it's college. Uh, if, I forget what he was telling there. There are places where you can type out your essay and they will send back the grade. It. I'm not sure what he said about it. If I find out that information, let me write it down. So that would be nice to have a because I'm not a I'm not a grader. They call people who grade readers. I'm not a reader. They, where where they taught you how to grade the SAT way. Not that everybody can do that, but all I can do is teach you what they're expecting from you. Whether they're expecting A B C and you give them X Y Z, you're not going to get a good grade. X Y Z is good. It's good. It's, you know your grammar and everything, but it's it's not what SAT wants from you. And that's how a lot of people don't do well. They're given what they got, what they got taught in 10th and 11th grade and 12th. That's not what the SAT wants. So the grammar, that book is going to help you. There's a portion in the book which I focus on when I'm teaching my SAT students. It's about halfway through, actually it was page 100. I remember that. You know how you just remember some things? You don't know why you remember them. It was, oh, page 99. And it's called Grammar Pitfalls. So these are SAT Grammar Pitfalls. Can you see it or it's too? Yeah, it's too small. That's because you're, you're still sharing your screen. So it's um, 24 grammatical pitfalls. This chapter describes 24 problems in grammar and usage. Two dozen English language pitfalls, 24 pitfalls that show up repeatedly on the SAT and ACT. You don't have to go and learn all the pitfalls of the English language grammar, only the ones that the SAT focus on. So that's why this book is good. Yeah? So we're not going to be wasting our time learning everything in English language grammar in three months. Just what the SAT tends to look for. Once you got that down, it's a small enough book. It's just got exercises in there. We'll, we'll spend some time. What I have to do is I have to figure out some kind of program where I'll need to sit down and see how many weeks we have for the next SAT. And then see for the four, not really counting essay, because the essay, I'll tell you the only thing you can do with that essay, once you've learned those literary devices, just keep on writing essays. 
look at the time they give you. I forget what it is, maybe an hour, whatever they give you. Sit down and keep on getting articles. Time yourself, read the article, write, you know, your analysis on how the author is communicating. And then it's important that they also wrote that um, essay section that I sent you on your phone. They wrote, well, they're not interested in, if the author is using five different ways, he's using persuasion, he's pulling on people's emotion, he's using simile, whatever, whatever. They're not interested in you noting all five. No, 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 no. They wrote it there. They're not interested in you. Just pick on like two or three and let us know you get it. When you say simile, how? How? Then you say, for instance, you'll notice in this quote, the quote, da -da 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 -da. he heavily relies on the use of simile to communicate his passion, whatever, his article to the people, to the audience. And it also shows up in the very next paragraph where he says, open quote, SAT love quotes. Write it in capitals there. SAT love quotes. <laughs> the, the essay section. Don't write anything in the essay section without quoting. It makes you look very intelligent. It makes you look very perceptive. It makes it seem like you really read it and got it in such a short time. To the point where you're quoting this, you know, it just makes your paper look smart. And all you're doing is you're just following instructions. Quote something. If he quoted, if what the author said is there, don't say, and he said something about, no, no, don't, don't paraphrase. He said, quote, quote. These are some of the tips and strategies that you begin to pick up. A little bit here, it's like you're cooking and then what you cook is so bad. Maybe you used um, potatoes that were too soft or something, but then you start seasoning it. You put salt, you cut some onion, <laughs> put a little pepper, put a little garlic, you know? And then at the end of the day, it's not so bad, even though it started off bad. For instance, cabbage, a lot of vegetables, you know, don't taste so great by themselves. So especially when you're cooking for kids, you kind of want to pep up those vegetables a little bit and sprinkle it off. Just anything to make them eat. Vegetable. So that's what you're doing um, with this whole thing, you know, with the essay, with anything. So we've talked a little bit about the essay, we've talked a little bit about the grammar. We haven't really talked about the reading, aside from pacing, we were talking about pacing, and the fact that the passages are not simple walkover passages, yeah? There are passages that you gotta get into. You know, if you're talking about politics or stuff like that, that maybe you're not even interested in it. If you talk about fashion and you know doing your hair and all that, it's like, oh yeah, you know, you kind of get into the fashion. But if it's something like, oh man, talking about the 1920s and gardening, botanical architecture in there, oh, you know, something very drab. One of those Chinese channel kids on those YouTube channels, there was one thing he said, and it was like, he titled his YouTube video, he titled it something like, the five things you need to do to develop or something like that. But one of the things he talked about seems so insignificant, but I find it so important. And it's on the lines of what I'm just saying now. And he said, Whenever he's reading a passage to answer the questions, he says, I forget the words he used, but he said, make, um, get, like, engage with it. He was like, put yourself in that passage. He said, say, make it fun, say, even though it's not a fun topic. Architecture in the 13th century. Yeah. Um, some people love that. I know my husband loves architecture and, you know, buildings. Whenever we, we, we lived in England for a while, and he's like, that's the buildings, the old building. And I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not interested. But he gets excited about old buildings, and, you know. So if you're reading this, if I'm reading it, I'm not interested. But, you know, I've got to make myself interested so I can do 
answer the questions better. So he was saying about like the psychology of it. Put yourself into it. Pretend you are good at it. Pretend you like it. You hate it, but make convince yourself because mind over matter. You know, you know when they use hypnosis, hyp hypnosis, that's what they call it, to convince people, say people who eat too much or whatever it is, and they can't tell them now, I will stop eating, and then whatever they do, it hypnotize them. <laughs> there's and there's a, a great element of truth there. I don't believe in all that stuff. I don't do that, but it's the mind. That's why when you become a Christian, the Bible says about renewing your mind. Like that mind is so powerful. You've learned all these things over the years and all that stuff, but now you become a Christian, you want to use the word of God to, to that mindset has to change from the way you used to look at things before and now the way, for instance, the world says save as much money as you can for your retirement, you know? The Bible says give and it shall be given unto you. And whoever gives, you know, is, is, gives or helps a poor man is, is lending to God. You, you know, you're, you're letting God use your money. So that's a different mindset. Suddenly you're a Christian you're like, oh, I gotta give. I gotta give my offering. I gotta can't help people. I gotta, you know. But the world was like, save, 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 save. Don't give anybody, save, save what, you know, <laughs> save for retirement. That's a mindset change. And you have to work on that. So that's the psychology of it. I will let you go. It's been a lot, I know. But one thing you cannot say is uh, you don't know what to do. <laughs> I've given you enough to do. So Monday, we'll go over this checklist, see how much you can accomplish. The good thing about virtual, you know, I can't, I can't hit you. <laughs> I can't pull your hair if you don't do the work. <laughs> Even if I was there, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, with my kids, you know, when they were young, I flick their ears, like, flick it. You know, I homeschooled them. Flick, did you just talk back to me? <laughs> and when they're really bad, they get, they get tw like, tw twisted. <laughs> but, you know, just do as much as you can, yeah? And I shall see you Monday. I believe it's same time, 7... 7 p.m. Yeah? And give me some feedback. Can you still hear me? Yes, ma'am. And give me feedback on the how this time of the day works for you. How the, does the two hours work for you? I think what your mom is proposing is, I propose the first lesson, I need two hours. Just to, you know, we, didn't, we couldn't even get into college board. We couldn't really get into Khan Academy. I wanted to you know, look a few things up and do all this different stuff. We don't even have the book yet, so we're not actually working yet. But uh, we've got to put all this stuff together, give you a lot of mindset stuff, get you to understand that there's so many different ways that you can be learning and doing things, knowing that you need to be timing yourself to know how long you take, so you know that you've got to knock off extra time. Um, one more thing I will add on. If you have time, and I know you have time, because everybody's got a phone. You, you, you take our phones and we waste so much time. I happen to work on my phone. I work on the stock market in between teaching. So I need my phone. I need my iPad. I use all three. I use my laptop, my iPad, and this. I have some charts on my iPad. I'll have some other charts on this phone. I'll have my, whatever I do, you know. Um, but then you're know, doing something, something pops up, you quickly check it, and you quickly, you know, it's just so like time wasting stuff. See if you can find some SAT apps. If you're planning on taking the ACT, see if you can find some ACT apps. It takes time because you need to, when I'm looking for, sometimes I'm looking for scheduling apps. I'm big on scheduling. And I'll download one, I'll look at it, look at it, and I'm like, nah. Delete it. I don't like that one. Download another one. <laughs> you know? So work it a little bit. See if you can come up with some SAT, SAT apps. Um, math or reading. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I will meet you on Monday at 7 p.m. Okay, ma'am. Nice talking with you. Take care. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Right. Tell me what weird you are.